No Jumper, coolest podcast in the world, and today I'm here with the one and only BRS Cash. How you doing, man? Well, what's going on? Feeling good, man. I remember the day that I first heard Throat Baby. Just so happened to be the same day that I met Blueface's uh, crew of girls that he had in that reality house. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I started to, like, hum it. They all went crazy. They all start screaming the lyrics. That's when I knew. I'm like, oh, this is you a hit. time it was. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. If these kind of girls like it, then it must be real. Hell yeah, for sure. Definitely. Um, that's a gift to have a song that like almost exclusively is like for the ratchets. Oh yeah, is that you know, it bring that it bring that side up. Yeah, it bring that side up for sure. Definitely. I wonder if there's like you know nuns who hear that song and they just sort of get turned out and they just leave the faith. I don't know. I, n- I never really thought about that. <laughs> it could be possible. It, it could definitely could be. Yeah, I think that throat baby to me, like if I was going to like completely change my life, I would probably do it to throat baby rather than like WAP. WAP. I mean, WAP is dope, but for me, throat baby gonna bring that side up. You know, it's that inner freak. That's facts. Mm-hmm. Um, how do you? Okay, let, let's just talk about the video in general. That's one thing I'm really curious about. So, was it always in your mind that Tiana Trump was gonna be? In the throat baby video, yeah, she was. She definitely an inspiration. Hmm. Yeah, for sure. So you've uh, donated some seed to her in the past, I'm assuming. I mean, you know, <laughs> real players, you know, keep keep quiet. It's like that. No, but I'm I'm saying like just in front of the computer screen, not like actually oh, yeah, before yeah. the video. Oh yeah, for sure. I feel like she's probably like one of the most influential top givers of. Our era. That's why she had to be in the video. It mm. was just like it went hand in hand. Mm. For sure. Definitely. What uh okay, so when it came time to think about the features, who who did you think of and and how do you feel about how they came through? I oh, I feel a hundred percent about how the features came through. Um the baby, I had already wanted him on there from the get go. Mm. So it was just like when I got it done, I'm like, Okay, cool. And then I already knew that I needed like a girl perspective mm. from the song. So my, I had seen uh, JT play it. So I'm like, okay, cool. I reached out to them and the rest was history. So you actually just had a conversation with them. It wasn't like the label going and, and doing it on your behalf? I mean, we, we said something in the DMs, but you know, our management and team had to, you know, make it official mm. to get it done. That was like a mega COVID era video too, because it's all green screen the whole time, huh? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. It, it took two days. Really? Yeah. And they got you doing all kinds of crazy ass shit. You're fucking diving in off the off the the diving board into a throat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's legendary. You got the baby on a snowboard and shit. That was. I felt like you guys made you made a lot out of what you had there with the green screen shit. Oh yeah. Shout out to Edgar. You know, Blank Square Production. Mm, definitely. So you, I saw you say that you've been booked up since 2019, but when I actually go back on your YouTube and stuff, I can't really find anything pre throw baby, right? Nah, nah, nah. So you were grinding, but you you sort of erased what you were doing prior to that. Nah, I ain't erased. I just wasn't really documenting it. Oh, okay. Like it was, but like when the pandemic, it was like a little bit before the pandemic came, like three months, and then the pandemic. So I was in the streets for three months. Boom. Then he got shut down. I so, guess twenty nineteen was not as long ago as I'm acting. No, nah, it it's really actually, not. It was just just the other day. Somebody was saying to me, they're like, "Oh, I seen you at Rolling Loud." 2019, I'm like, damn, that's the last rolling lot I've been to. Yeah, so it's like, we that's the last the whole day everybody memory. Yeah. We was outside. <laughs> that's facts. Um, okay, so how did, how did you, how would you describe, like, how you got your music career going? Like, what were the early days of you making music like? The early days of me making music was basically, like, I was, like, behind the scenes. I used to be around with, like, Travis Porter, Bankroll Fresh. Really? You know All the way yeah. back then with Travis yeah. Porter in them? Yeah. Holy shit. I was around in that time, the whole little Street is X era. Wow, really? Yep. And were you you were young? How old were you around that era? I had to be like 16, about 16, 17. And how'd you end up getting around them and, and, and what led to that? Oh, uh, my cousin is in the group, Travis Porter. Oh, really? Which one? Strap. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was always around it, but other than that, like I was just behind the scenes working. Right. Trying to wait for my turn. Really? So you always feel like you had some talent musically, or, or were you happy at one point to just sort of be playing the back? Oh, no, nah, I always felt like I had that talent. I always felt like I was the one. Uh-huh. It, it just time, timing. Yeah. No, I had an artist in here the other day who was talking about how he was grinding in the studio for two years before the, the, the big rapper that 
owned the studio actually heard him and realized that he was good. But oh, I mean, yeah. that kind of stood out to me a lot. I'm like, two years sounds ridiculous, but it took me ten. Ten. Yeah. Really. Good ten. I mean, that makes sense too, though, because the travel. Travis Porter wave was a long time ago, yeah. Like 2010, like 2009, 2010. So how were you working on your craft all along during that? Were you just recording as much as possible? You were recording in the crib? Yeah, recording in the crib, writing, going to the studio. I would like write every day. Uh -huh. I'm doing everything that I can, you know what I'm saying, in in the music field. Um, my mama always was like, yeah, you, you need to get a job. But I just knew like a job wasn't really for me. Really? Yeah. You weren't, were you, did you have a job along the way and shit? Were you having to do that or? I had a, I had three jobs and each job I had for like a month. Really? I got fired because I was like want to do shows and I want to go to the club, try to promote the music, but mm. it ain't really worked like that. That's the worst part about having a job is you gotta miss out on this cool shit. Yep, <laughs> yep. <laughs> miss going out. I, it was it was crazy. Definitely. So, did you have any? Were you gaining any traction with the music prior to the Throat Baby popping off? Like like how was that going in the in the months or years leading up to that? So, 2019, I was gaining a little bit. Mm -hmm. Um, but it was with a song called Time Right. Mm. But you know, it was playing in the clubs or whatnot, but you know, it didn't really do it. It didn't have the impact that Throat Baby had going on. Mm. So it was just a little bit. But then you so you made Throat Baby all by yourself and at that point you didn't even have any kind of industry stuff going on yet or anything. You just yeah. made it completely yourself. Yeah, I ain't had nothing going on. Okay. And, and then what do you like how do you realize that it's a hit or that it's gonna actually go crazy? All the DJs and the clubs and everybody started playing. And then when the girls kept asking, like, what song is that? Because it was never out. Right. They would just play it in the club. Oh, so you would, like, sneak it to the DJs even though it wasn't yeah, actually out online. Yeah, my management, they would send it to the DJs. And it only had, like, one and a half verse on them. Right. And they was like, you got to finish it. So I finished it. And everybody kept asking, like, what song is that? They kept trying to Shazam it. It wouldn't pop up because it, it was never out. uh -huh. That's pretty incredible. It's almost impossible to get DJs to listen to anything, never so mind something that's question. unreleased. That's what answer your question. Now that I think about it, when you said the traction in twenty nineteen. Yeah. It wasn't it wasn't out. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's what happened. That makes sense. Okay, hundred percent. Um, all right, so then the song starts kicking off. Like, how do you approach it? Because like when you have a son that big, it's like this is a real business opportunity. There's a lot of money to be made. How do you how do you go about getting serious about that? You gotta get with the right people. Right. Because a lot of folks might feel like they know what they're doing, mm. but it's really like a lot of ins and outs that I really didn't know that I started figuring out and started learning. So got with the right team. Mm. That was the, the main part of getting it out. Right. I always thought my face should have been on the cover, but listen. The know. cover of the music video, like the thumbnail? No, or? The, little, the cover art. Oh, okay. Because everybody get brainwashed by the little red lips, the red background in the lips. Mm. Sometimes I might be right there by you like, yeah. It's my song. Yeah, I mean, it's an interesting situation that you find yourself in because, and it's like the kind of thing that happens to a lot of artists who sort of blow up on TikTok and everything is that the song becomes so big mm -hmm. that it's like then you're in the position of having to sort of be like, nah, yo, I made this song and I got some other fire music. And but you got to catch up to it. Mm. You got to catch up to it. So you, you got to catch that before it even get to that point. Mm. You know, and sometimes it's hard for some people, but like I said, Without, if if I probably didn't have a label, then I probably wouldn't have been able to kind of catch up to it. Right. So I, me getting the deal was kind of like the best part, going with LVRN. So, were you having that conversation with a shitload of different labels, or how, what was that like? Oh yeah, yeah. I was having conversation with almost every label, but it's just like I wanted to to get what made sense. Mm. If it didn't make sense, I'm like, you know. I see y'all focus on the song, but I want y'all to focus on me as an artist and just not this song. Right. You know, some folks be worried about just getting a check off of one thing and then milk that and then you done. Because a lot of labels now, they kind of, they want to sign you to a deal that's like really just about one song and they're they're almost yep. kind of straight up about that now, right? Oh yeah, they come straight for it and then it's just like, it didn't make sense. Right. I had to go with what made sense for my future. Definitely. Um. So yeah, I mean, that, has that taken things to a different level? Like, how would you compare being independent to being signed? Like, how much has that changed shit? Oh man, a lot has changed because it's, it took a lot of weight off of my shoulders as of me trying to figure out like, dang, if I upload it, how I'm finna collect this or, mm. you know, or how am I, probably how would I even get to you? Right. You know what I'm saying? 
It's just like certain little different things. Mm, that helps smooth a lot of different shit out. Yeah, I mean, like I, a yeah. lot of times it feels like a record could only kind of get so big without the help of a label or, or something along those lines. Yeah, that's, that's for sure. Mm. That's definitely for sure. I can say that now that I'm a dad, I actually really appreciate the censored version of your song, which yeah. I never felt like that in my whole life before. <laughs> I had to make it for my mom and my little sister. Right. I ain't really want my mom going to work playing it for her friends or my or have my little sister singing it. There's something about the word throat that just really sounds inappropriate. Yeah. You know? I didn't I didn't really think of it until I just sat and listened to it one day and I'm like, yeah, this song really is, you know what they say it is. And the idea of like creating a baby in a throat. Yeah. That's just really like an explicit like It's a sick thought. Yeah. But you know, we have those thoughts as men some days. You know, this this is what we have. <laughs> Definitely. But I mean, like, just having a baby, I find myself wanting to sing. But then I saw myself, and then I realized, no, it's Go Baby. You can sing the censored version yeah. to the kid. You see Go Baby. And then, and obviously, she don't know how, what the fuck I'm saying anyway. But it feels like it's a good middle ground. Yeah, you can rock it to sleep. Go Baby. <laughs> you know what I mean? It, it's smooth. Have you had to perform that version of it? Like, do you ever do, like, shows that, for, like, younger crowds? Like I said, it hasn't really been the main shows. Nah, I had to do a uh, voting. I had to change it for a voting one time. Vote baby? Yeah. Oh, Vote wow. baby. That's hot. It was for a good cause, though. Right, <laughs> definitely. <Yeah. laughs> like, what, this was like right before the election or something? Yeah, it was right before the election. Damn, I bet that has a lot to do with why Trump got the fuck out of here. I don't know. It, it could have. I feel like I had a powerful impact. I mean, Georgia was a big swing state. Oh, yeah. That's, that's my state. The throat baby vote is a big vote. Like, I heard vote. Biden was going going hard trying to get the throat baby voter. Yeah. I mean, it makes sense to me. Um, what have you wasted money on since you blew up? Have you got a chance to waste, waste much money yet? Nah, I really, I, you know, we in the pandemic, so it's just mm -hmm. like... I don't really, I, the, the stuff that I want to do, I really can't do. Like, I would definitely be traveling out the country, stuff mm -hmm. like that. But the most I done spent is just, like, probably, like, clothes, stuff right. like that. Uh, that's a necessity as a rapper. Yeah, and that's it. As a podcaster, not so much. I wear the same thing every day. It's cool, though. They show a tie. You know? We can get away with a lot. Exactly. What, uh, <laughs> when, when, you, uh, when you think about, well, okay, like, have you had any, like, crazy star encounters or like like things that have really been like holy fuck i'm famous because i feel like you can only get so much of that feeling when it's just streaming on spotify and shit yeah and i feel has, has there been many moments where you you know find yourself at johnny depp's house and you're like i'm lit now um nah i mean i done been out to clubs with, with people and you know and they acknowledge mm. so it's like with even that that's like a dream come true at the end of the day right and at my soul, just to see the reaction of, of females, it's like, man, this is crazy. Definitely. Yeah, sometimes I just sit back and I think about it, like, you know, and I thank God every day. Yeah, definitely. Especially just because you grinded for it so hard. It feels like sometimes when, when kids just blow up as soon as they turn 18, they yeah. don't really have, like, a perspective on how dope it is to be able to be even involved in that at all. Yeah. It, it's, the, it's the fact that the, the steps I took, I feel like it. Because mm -hmm. some, when some people just get it and they feel like it came overnight, it's just, it don't really mean too much. Mm -hmm. But it mean much to you when you, when it took this long. 100%. Do you, um, do you feel like you're sort of at risk of being pigeonholed into only making one kind of song? Or do you have like a lot of other types of content that you plan on hitting people over the head with? Oh, no, I got a lot of content. I just dropped a um, project called Cash Only. Which mm -hmm. is out right now, and then I, I put a, a lot of different vibes on there. You know what I'm saying? I got tracks about you know my pain, my life. You know, mm -hmm. you might not know like at the beginning of Thought Baby, one of my my best friends, she ended up passing away, which I got her on my chain right here. Okay, right. But she one of the girls talking on her. I got a song on a project called Thug Cry, and it's about her. Damn. So how'd she actually pass? Uh, she got off work and fell asleep behind the wheel. Wow. And hit the wall. That's terrible. Yeah. So. Fuck yeah! I mean that, that's that's dope that that you have that kind of variety uh, available, because uh, yeah, I noticed that uh, the one, one of the the conflicts that you kind of got into since you came out on the scene is that you and uh, Six Nine had a little argument. It's kind of like a rite of passage for a, for oh, yeah, a rapper yeah, yeah. these days. You got to have a little beef with him, right? 
Yeah, nah, I, I don't. I, I, it ain't no beef with me on that on that tip. Like, I just look past. I ask the question. And the question can be answered. Right. And yeah, what it is. So for the record, it was he. He said something about how you. Uh, or no, or he said something about how he was the greatest rapper from New York of all time. And then you said better than Jay Z and Biggie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was just basically. A, yeah, it was a question. And uh, he responded and basically said, "You're a one hit wonder. Wonder, fuck you." Yeah, and you know. I really just looked past that comment because what folks don't know is your favorite rapper was a one hit wonder before anything. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? As long as you got that one hit and you get in the door, you easy you can make another hit. So that one hit wonder line is just like a a little low blow that folks try to you know make themselves feel good with. But I just looked past it. Mm, definitely. Yep. I mean, he's in kind of the opposite situation where it's like he would do anything to be able to make a hit right now, but nobody wants to hear that shit, so it ain't happening. Yeah. Are you mm -hmm. are you sort of anti beef because it would be super easy for you to sort of shit on him right now and just talk all this shit and you seem sort of reserved? Nah, nah, I'm not anti beef. I mean, you know, I'm from the streets. You know, if it get there, it get there. But that little whole little situation, that's just like that's past me. Yeah, it ain't that ain't nothing serious. Right, it was a question. It's interesting though because probably a lot of people wouldn't have expected you to be coming to the defense of of Biggie and Jay Z since you seem like you're. Younger and and not necessarily like you know I'm oh, yeah, sure people so, kind of assume that you're not some schooled hip hop head, but you yeah. seem like you actually know what you're talking about. Oh yeah, I mean back in the, I used to listen to music back in the day. I used to listen to Aaliyah, all that. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? You got to think people got parents. So with my mom and my dad used to play, I used to you know hear it too. Mm -hmm. So yeah, definitely. Were you uh <laughs> what were you listening to like when you were in high school and shit? Like what was the hot shit for you at that time? Oh, in high school, um, my mom, she was kind of punk rock, so I was listening to, like, Creed, Elton John. Oh, wow. Um, Maroon 5, stuff like that. That's that punk rock shit. I hear that. Yeah, so. I grew up on Green Day, bro. <laughs> Green Day was the shit when I was, that was my first punk band when I was in fourth grade. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. We gotta get more Green Day involved in uh, this shit out here. Um, so, yeah. In terms of like new experiences that you had since you uh, have found this new fame, I saw you snowboarding. Like you actually went snow snowboarding as well oh, yeah, yeah, in yeah. real life, not what the baby did in the video. Nah, yeah, I, I wasn't asking. You know what I'm saying? Catching the vibe. You had a show out there or something? Nah, I was just out there chilling. You just went out to Aspen. Most rappers don't just go to Aspen. I don't nah, think. we went out. I went out there with the whole gang. We out there kicking it. Really? Yeah, for sure. I would never go to the snow to just kick it. I mean, it was something that. That people that I know that I ain't never did before, and that's what I wanted to do. Like I had just left Chicago, went mm. straight into, you know what I'm saying? Aspen. Definitely. Chilling. How was it though? You, you take to the snowboarding right away? Nah. You didn't like it? <laughs> it, it? It make your your heels hurt. But yeah. I, I I caught a I caught a couple of, a, a good you know rides one time. Yeah. I tried it once when I was like 12, and I ain't tried it since. That's yeah. probably. I know it, it's it's definitely dangerous. Mm. But, you know, if you a thrill seeker, then it's something to go do. I wanted to ask you about this whole sort of, like, new era of of girls. And I guess that, like, a lot of people kind of trying to pin it on Sweetie or the City Girls or whatever. But it's sort of like this new era where girls are kind of making it out like guys should be spending a fuckload of money on them <laughs> if they expect any kind of pussy or anything like that. And I feel like in some weird way... The Throat Baby song is kind of like those types of girls. Like, that's one of their songs. You think? So just because I said I got a little hundred, that's if you want the extra little 40, you got to come right now. But that's, uh, that's I, $140, though. But I think that the, your music is encouraging these girls to fucking nah. tax dudes for handbags for sex. No, no, no. It can't be because I'm going to tell you, my daddy was a real-life pimp. You know yeah. what I'm saying? They brought him back the money. You know, mm. he always taught me that she going to bring you the money before anything. Right. So I can never be one of them that's saying, like, oh, yeah, you got to do this for a female. You got to do that. Now, nah, if that's your girl, yeah. Right. But I, my daddy raised me on the, the other way around. I know, isn't that? That's weird. It's like the world has changed. And so now these girls want to be the ones who are actually having the pimp mentality. And they're going to send your ass to work. Right. And then you're going to go buy shit at the Louis store and then come bring it back to them. And that's how this is supposed to play out now. Nah, 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 nah. nah. <laughs> you're not into it? No, no, nah, I'm not into all that. <laughs> yeah. Nah. That's crazy to me. If to each you, his own, though. Are you in a relationship right now? Nah, nah, nah. No. Mm mm. So what's the what's what's the antics like on the road for the throat baby champion? Oh, I mean with me, like I don't really be you gotta think like I was already on the road around the whole little toy life beforehand. Mm -hmm. So it's like the fact that I already had experienced it before it was my time, it was just like it's not it don't really excite me. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I'd be ready to get back to the city. 
Right. You know what I mean? I don't, I don't really be paying too much attention. You have so, any girls try to pull some shiesty shit on you on the road yet? I don't know. I, I don't even let them get that close. You don't wake up and the chains are missing off of, off of the bed? and. Uh, no, no, no. I don't let them get that close. Oh, yeah. yeah. Nah. That's way too close. Yeah, that's, that's too close. Definitely. They're going to be running around using your debit card, all that shit. Uh, nah, you can't even, you won't even know what's going on. You got to get your phone back from security before mm-hmm. anything. Oh, okay. Yeah, you ain't, You're heavy on having the phones taken away? Yeah, we ain't doing all that. Oh, that's smart. That's even if you just want a conversation, it ain't none of that going on. Interesting. Got to keep it play at all time, baby. You ain't had one of them li- try to leak your number or anything yet? That's what I also hear a lot about. I got like three phones, so if they did, <laughs> the other two stay dead half the time anyway. The number that I give out, they be dead. Right, you just pop on into the other one? Yeah. I just go. That makes they sense. They both connected. Mm-hmm. So I can see them calling on the other one. What would you do? This is a hypothetical. What would you do if you were in prison and Trey Songs posted your girl on his Instagram story? I wouldn't even, I wouldn't, I wouldn't even, <laughs> like, I, I wouldn't even really, really worry about that. You know what I'm saying? Trey Songs. It's Trey. Right. He seen to him. I don't know if I well, but actually I could be I'll keep it real that one time my girl got a DM from Trey Songs right. and she said some shit like cause she's like, What should I say? I was like, tell that motherfucker to do a no jumper podcast. And yeah. she said it, and then he goes, Wait, who is this? Like yeah. acted like he was hitting on the wrong girl. I'm <laughs> like, bro, this dude probably does this like all the time. Like, oh, she got a boyfriend? Fuck, I'm gonna just say this. And yeah. that'll make it seem a little bit more innocent. Uh, yeah, that way Trey, he's a smooth guy. Yeah, he's a smooth guy. I got nothing against him, but also like I feel like if he posts your girl on his Instagram story, and also the girl that we're talking about is is a rapper too, so it's like, oh yeah, okay, you know, if she's a rapper, you can oh, just yeah. appreciate her as a oh. rapper entity, right? Yeah, I guess I don't know. I don't know what girl he done posted. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> this is a hypothetical. Oh uh, yeah, <laughs> but I ain't, I ain't even gonna lie to you though. Like a real life situation, like probably like three years ago, Trey done had one of my girls. Had her or yeah. posted her? Uh, he had her. He, he While you were with her? Yeah, he done snatched her, man. Really? But it went, you know, it went no thing to a player. I'm like, you know, to each his own. But then she reported back to you and like, said. Nah, she told me. She told I said the DM. I said, damn, man. That's why I ain't got nothing against him, though. You know what I'm saying? I said, keep it play. But was that kind of intimidating? Like, damn, this dude is, like, famous for, for serving dick. Maybe I'm not serving nothing. dick I like he's serving dick. I can't do nothing. It, yeah. was, it was just like, damn, that's Trey Song, man. Right. Might hit one of them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to let you hold that, Trey. <laughs> I'm going to let you hold it, though. For sure. You got wow. it. Wow. That's amazing. Um, what was it like uh, shooting the video with Mulatto? And, and how do you feel about uh, about that in general? Like, how, how did that song come about? Why did you decide that that was the next single for you to rock with? I like, that's my dog. That's my personal partner, so... Everybody always was like, oh, yeah, well, y'all got to go ahead and do a song, but not even knowing, like, we been had that song done. Mm. And I just felt like it was time to drop it. So it's it's always a vibe, you know what I'm saying? Mm. Like, it was That song was much needed. It's a vibe for everybody. And we finna mess the city up with it. Definitely. For sure, Cash Out featuring Mulatto. Mm. I, I, can, I ain't really seen nobody else who was fit better than her on that verse. Right. She sent the verse back in, like, Two days, killed it. Really? Went harder than I did. I'm like, dang. When, all right. So you've been knowing her like throughout your come up and everything? Because yeah. I, I guess you guys are coming up around the same time, out the same area, huh? Yeah. Yeah. It's in London. Yeah. Yeah. So like my my um, management, they used to throw out the parties and stuff at the club. So booking artists and all that, like you get a chance to meet everybody. Right. You know what I'm saying? Get tied in. Have you uh, gotten to see a lot of people that you were sort of coming up with, like change and shit? Or uh, you seem like you were probably like the same person now that you were before all this shit. But I feel like a lot of people probably switch up real quick. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of folks. They honestly seen folks making then and and, and 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 switch up on you. Like they don't even know you. And yeah. then when you come around now, well, we got to get in. Mm. Like damn, I was I was just talking to you like two years ago. <laughs> Y'all remember me? I know. Isn't uh, it kind of like sickening when you see it up close and personal and just realize like that's really how I be. how people and they don't really even they, they probably don't even realize that they're doing it that they like are just showing you love because you're popping or that they probably you know yeah. wouldn't want anything to do with you if you hadn't been having the year that you're having. That's just right. crazy. Yeah, and I, and me practicing the laws of attraction helped me block a lot of that stuff out. Like it might make you angry sometimes, but you just got to look past a lot of it. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Don't stress yourself out about what these other folks got going on. Right. And I just let them do them and be like, oh, yeah, okay, okay, for sure. I'm going to fuck with you. Right. That's it. I'm going to fuck with you. 
I'm gonna fuck with you. That kid got shot. In Atlanta. Damn. Playing around, man. It ain't safe just being a little like white kid influencer either out there now. No. Nah. No. Nah. 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 You wanna just you say gotta, something? You can't funny? really be out like <laughs> they really outside. Right. And they looking. They looking for it. And I think they set them up too. Like they were trying to meet up with them to buy something or whatever. Some oh. like a little Instagram scheme, you know, everybody's oh, nah. selling promo and linking up to do a skit or whatever. I don't know nothing about all that. I just know that Atlanta, you know, we outside. Yeah, you gotta be careful how you're moving out there, huh? Yeah. That's facts. Um, okay, so in your mind, what do you want the rest of, of this next year to look like? And, and what do you need to accomplish in order to feel like you're making the most of this moment that you're having? Um, I want the, the, the rest of this year to be, you know what I'm saying? I want to keep winning. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? I want to drop another, uh, another project, get another number one, you know what I'm saying? Get, get some more plaques. Mm-hmm. And I just want to continue to keep elevating. Like, I know... I know the process don't happen overnight, mm. so it's like I'm not rushing, really rushing nothing. I'm willing to take the step by step that it take to get to where I'm going. You mm. know, like I said, all the one hit, one to talk, I, it's in one, it out the other one, because I know, you know what I'm saying, the process behind the, what's going on. Right. So I just really just wanted to, to elevate. Makes sense. No, mm-hmm. definitely. I mean, uh, I, I look forward to it. So it's, it's going to be kind of uh, interesting 2021 now that shit is opening back up at least in the rest of the country you from atlanta was shit is apparently yeah, been bad open. open yeah we've been open facts um all right so it was good having a conversation with you. i know you got we gotta wrap this up a little bit quick because you got another thing you're about to run to yeah i got a little shoot i gotta do really what's that for vogue cover gq nah, some shit like that i did something like that yesterday this for like the uh the label i'm doing with, with all the artists really you know what i'm saying black boogie blood bell oh, everybody shit. that makes sense yeah Hard. And, you know, do a little game photo. Nice. Well, appreciate it. Uh, BRS Cash, appreciate you coming through, man. No Jumper, coolest podcast in the world. Check us out on YouTube, SoundCloud, iTunes. Like, comment, subscribe, and nojumper.com if you want to support. Let's go. Thank you, bro. Appreciate you for having me. Much love.